Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. In today's video, I want to talk about this GoTech floppy drive emulator, uh, using it on my 8088 motherboard project. So these have been around a little while. This was just brought to my attention a couple weeks ago. Uh, they will plug into most any PC, it seems like. They've got a 144 megabyte version. This is the 720K. Uh, for my project, it seems like you got to have a 720K floppy drive, so... The, uh, the project's over here. As you can see, this is my 10-slot board. And yes, I did get the floppy drive to finally start working on there. Turned out it was a bad uh, ROM chip, or RAM chip, sorry. I had a bad lot number. But anyway, I've got it plugged in. I've got my uh, multi-IO card here that's got the... Uh, Floppy controller built in. Got to have your DMA card in to use a drive. Uh, I got a USB drive on there. And uh, so we're ready to boot up. So the way this works, I had to download the uh, documentation. Uh, you definitely, there's some different documentation for the 144, but you want to get this documentation here for the for this model. And that's if you did buy this model here, the SFRM72-FUDL. Um, so you read through this and it explains the features. So really what you can do is one way is you can scan through the directory. So you plug it in, you use the buttons, and you select which directory you want to use. And it'll read and write like the first 720 kilobytes from each directory. Um... That side I don't, I'm not too worried about. What I want is drive images, and so there's an image mode. So to use this in image mode, you make a directory called image720 in the root directory on the stick. And in there, you put your images, and these are going to be 720 kilobyte images, uh, starting with 000.image through 099.image. So, uh, you can hold up to 100 images on here. Well, and that's if your stick will hold that much. I think mine will hold 38. So, you gotta have at least one image on the stick to begin with. And, uh, that's pretty much all there is, because if you don't have anything to read from, then it doesn't, uh, work. But, let's, uh, let's boot this up. Now, I've already got an image in the memory of the, uh, floppy uh, emulator so it's going to boot up from that the uh, the floppy image that I've already copied into memory so what happens is we'll explain this once it gets booted up so you can see the drive is reading and there's no USB stick in it. Starting MS-DOS. Now, my floppy disk image that I've been using does not have an auto exec, so it's going to ask you for the date and time. And that's the first indicator that we're booting for the floppy drive. Next is we've got our, our A colon prompt there. And you can see we do have a, a hard drive attached. So... I'll go back down here to the the emulator. What we're gonna do is you push both buttons at the same time. Till you get B. Which I, I think it stands for boot. So now you've got zero zero and you can change these. This button uh, the on the right changes the right number, the button on the left changes the left number. So you select, this is important, before you plug in your USB stick, you select the drive image number that you want, and we'll just use zero. So we'll plug in our stick. Now, all I did was kind of mount the stick. It didn't, it, we're not actually reading it yet. Let me put that down. Let's uh, scan back up here. We'll go a colon and let's just do dir and let's just make a new directory and 
Okay, now you can see there's there's a uh, two directories in there called Doom. This is just for a demo purposes. Now, what you do is you push the button on the right and you'll see a D0. What that doing is it's copying the contents of image 000 into the internal memory and it's holding it and you can like I didn't mean, would have booted up, you can it just stays in there pretty much forever. So we just copied that in. And we'll come back over here. Now if we type dir, you can see we're back to we, we lost that directory because we just overwrote the uh, image. So that's how you put a disk in, you could say. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. If you want, just like how we overwrote the existing disk, we can take the You got to take this the USB stick out and you can change the number say to 42 and you put the stick in and when you push the button there's no 42 so it'll overwrite what's in there so that's just automatically overwriting what's in there the other thing you can do we don't have a disk image 42 but if you push the left button you're going to see D2 and what that's doing is you're ejecting the disk so now it actually just created the disk image 042.img on the USB stick. And because we've removed the disk, it seems like, I think maybe once this didn't happen, but we quote removed the disk and it should give us a bunch of errors. Yeah, see it's, it's all kind of messed up because the disk quote has been removed. But we can now just push the button and you get that D0. And because there is a 42 now, we just inserted the disk. So that's kind of the basics of it is you put a disk in, you take a disk out with the two buttons. And like I said, you got to start with at least one disk image to, to start with. And then you can kind of copy it in a sense to different numbers if that's what you're working with. But really what you do is you, you either make a disk image in DOSBox or you download one, you copy to the stick, and then you're able to boot it on here. Now here's something that's complicated. Um, because there's a disk in the drive, and even when there isn't a disk in the drive, it always tries to boot from the drive. So what I have found See, we don't need that in there anymore. We're going to boot up. What I found is you just hold one of the buttons. I usually hold the one on the right. If you hold one of these buttons, pull it out so it focuses, it'll boot from the uh, C drive, which is kind of annoying that you have to hold the button while it boots. But like if this was in a machine, you couldn't unplug it. Um... There might be a jumper that I'm not selecting correctly for this, but uh, sorry. So we're, we just moved from the C drive, but because let's see if we we held the button, but we do have a disk in the A drive. So that's kind of the rundown of what I know of this. It uh, seems to be kind of handy, especially if you don't have floppy disks available, uh, because you can just take the images, which you would put on a disk anyway. And you just use the simulator. It's just kind of got that a little bit of a... It takes a little bit of learning the, the process of loading and unloading a disk from the drive itself. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the uh, comment section. Uh, thanks for checking out my video today.